good afternoon, good morning, good day VC. Hope you're all doing well. As you can see, it's a lovely summer's day here um, in January 2024. I have finally upgraded my phone for the first time in 10 years. So you'll notice the video and the audio quality should be much better. I previously had an iPhone 6, now I have an iPhone 15. Um, so it's a big jump. Anyway, welcome back to this week's uh, What I've Been Spinning. I hope you're all doing really well. I um, hope you're all staying warm in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and place the camera down without it falling over. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. I'm gonna talk about what I have been listening to. So first up here is this wonderful record here by Le Bradford. This is the Precision LP, which originally came out in 1996 on Cranky. Um, if anyone knows what this tool is here, please do let me know. Um, I have no idea. Um, the cool thing about this one is, if you can see that, this is a pressing on flying nun, it came out in 95, not 96, apologies. Um, this is a pressing on Flying Nun when the Flying Nun were based in the UK. So originally on Cranky, but this is the uh, the Flying Nun version. Um, very cool, this is a re really, really wonderful record. I won't talk about it in too much detail, but I played that earlier in the week. Probably not the most summery summer listen, um, nevertheless wonderful. Now next up is a recent arrival of an album that I absolutely love and adore. This is the 2023 uh, repress of Bowery Electric Beat. Um, originally on Cranky came out in 1996 um, and then it was reissued in 2016 and this is the 2023 repress. Now interestingly this is a hype sticker here that came with it, which says, first time this classic second album has been available on vinyl since original release and first US vinyl issue ever. Which is obviously incorrect because the 2016 um, reissue came out, which is strange. So I think that they've just reprinted the 2016 hype sticker because the 20, 20th anniversary bit would mean 1996 to 2016 um, so yeah very odd that that's on there considering this is a 2023 repress um, it did confuse me a little bit anyway moving on fantastic record um, we're playing side D in the background which is just a side long ambient piece really wonderful this is my favorite of theirs um, second release sandwich between the self-titled which is probably a more of a straight up shoegazy record and the third album sort of ventures into kind of like down tempo trip hop territory but this is like a perfect blend of kind of both of those sounds uh, sounds very cinematic shoegazy droney epic sounding um quite repetitive yeah really wonderful next up i played this record here the wonderful intents and purposes by the bill dixon orchestra a record that everybody should uh, have or know if you're into free jazz and avant-garde music. I used to have an original of this, which was absolutely trashed, um, which I moved along. This is the Superior Viaduct reissue from, oh God, when, 20 something, 2008, 2009. Um, yeah, really, really, really beautiful, really interesting compositions on here. Um, yeah, fantastic record bit of a strange record that I really like. Um, this is quite a common record to find on the cheap in Australia and New Zealand. This is called Benediction Moon and it's basically a devotional Hare Krishna record. Um, I've seen this sell from anywhere from three dollars to forty dollars depending on how you want to spin it. You know, is it, is it a uh, psych Eastern record or is it is it just a cheap religious record there's some really quite cool and interesting tracks on it I do genuinely really enjoy this this has been in the collection for years 
um, you know, it's just not even on really a label. Um, yeah, Hare Krishna songs on one side, and then um, some vaguely light psychedelic songs um, on the other. Don't ever pay anything over, you know, five or ten dollars for it, but um, def definitely interesting. Um, I pulled out this uh, reissue here of Richard Horowitz's Eros in Arabia. Um, I picked up this reissue when it came out on Freedom to Spend in like 2007. Um, I think um, Alex Mudrick 247 just showed um, an original that he picked up, I think, recently um, in a live stream and it prompted me to pull this out. Uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Beautiful. Of course, I would love to have an original, but I don't want to pay any real money for for it. Um, I'm, ha I'm happy with the reissue. Um, what else have we got? It's quite a big stack. This is the wonderful Moshi by Barney Willen. Um, um, a what a journey this record is. Absolutely fantastic. This is, of course, the reissue on Souffle Continue. Um, wonderful. dug back into some uh, free jazz. This is something I picked up last year on my US trip. John Sermon, uh, Dave Holland, John McLaughlin, uh, Carl Berger, Stu Martin. Um, noisy, crazy free jazz on the Dawn label. Wonderful stuff. Also a, a record I picked up last year that I really love and I haven't listened to it anywhere near enough. This is jazz band De Free Ego, um, featuring George Lopez Ruiz. Um, this is a What Music reissue from a few years ago. Um, fantastic fusion record, funky jazz fusion, uh, goes out there and in there, and yeah, really top shelf stuff. I love this. Um, if you like, yeah, Miles Davis fusion period, um, check this one out from Argentina. This one here is kind of my go-to Sun Ra, weirdly. Um, just the one that I always feel like listening to. I pulled this out the other night, Night of the Purple Moon. Wonderful. I'm gonna move this out of the way so you can't see what's coming up. This is a record that I hadn't played in a very long time and it kind of blew me away all over again. Neil Ardley, A Symphony of Amaranth. This is a, a, a um, UK jazz record. Absolutely knocked my socks off all over again. Um, so so powerful, so fun, um, so detailed. Yeah, there's a lot of musicians going on here, lots of things happening. The big names would be um, Harry Beckett is on here. Ivor Cutler does a really, really wonderful piece called The Dong with a Luminous Nose. Um, yeah, j just, just really big, big band. UK jazz, um, strangely weird and psychedelic, um, absolutely fantastic. This is a UK press on Regal Zonophone. I think it's a, U oh no, it's a New Zealand pressing, that's right, which is very unusual. Um, there is a reissue on Wawa from a few years ago um, that came out. All right, this is where we start to get a bit all over the show. Um, played this wonderful record that I picked up recently on, um, originally on NPS. Um, this is Noon in Tunisia. Um, I think this is on originally is part of on that Jazz Meets the World series that a few people in the VC have been talking about lately. Um, but yeah, this is this is fantastic. If you can see that line up there, George Grunt, Sahib Shahab, John Luke Ponte, Salah El Mahdi, and the Bedouins. Um, I guess you would say this is um, Jazz Fusion. Yeah, jazz fusion with North African sounds all fused together. Lots of really heavy percussion. Um, sounds really busy and, and vibrant and, and wonderful. Yeah, um, I do really like this record. Again, quite hard to find now. All right, how are we doing? Should we speed it up? Um, last night I pulled out this absolute classic here, The Roots of Dub. There he is, King Tubby. Um, 
mas master of his craft. I won't speak about it too much. This is some sort of Jamaican pressing on clock tower. I can't tell you what the pressing is. Um, who knows? Anyway, it's a Jamaican VG Plus, which means it's really like a good minus copy, but it, do it does sound fantastic. I pulled out this just because I haven't played it in a long time. I was surprised to remember that it's a, a proper OG with the orange labels. Um, I looked it up on Discogs out of curiosity and the, the value of this has jumped astronomically. Um, it, it is a fantastic record, but I just, I paid, I don't know what the equivalent is, but I paid 30 New Zealand dollars for this in a record store six years ago. Um, and it was a good deal at the time, but considering now, when I look, people have bought that for 350 New Zealand dollars, and that's only in six years. Um, it's just wild to me. It's, it's really hard. I, like, I love the record. It's a really great jazz record, but who, who is spending that much money on those sort of records now? It kind of, I just almost feel a little bit priced out with records these days, but, um, you know, I'm obviously very grateful for what I have and what I, you know, what I love. And I'm really lucky that I did manage to pick up a lot of things for fractions of the price that they go for now. Um, yeah. And when I do decide to spend on something big, I really have to think about it uh, and really decide if it's worth it. Um, anyway, what else on next? Azimuth. Its debut album. This is a reissue on Far Out. Um, originally came out on, is it Som Livre? This is a, a really wonderful, funky, groovy, light, breezy record. Um, perfect for summertime. This was something that I, you know, one of my best scores in recent times. I grabbed this off Facebook Marketplace for super, super cheap. This is a very early Brazilian pressing in mint condition. And when I say like cheap, it was like, Again, I think it was 45 New Zealand dollars, something like that. Um, ridiculously, ridiculously cheap. Um, yeah, played that. Um, I actually played the second disc because I know, I know the first half inside out, back to front. And it was nice to familiarize myself with the second half of it. Um, and then what I was playing this morning, Burning Spear, Marcus Garvey, I don't need to say too much about this. Um, this is another Jamaican pressing on Tough Gong. Um, love the label design here. I think that's really fantastic. Look at that. And then I played volume two of the Tighten Up box set. Really lucky to get this as well. Years ago at a record fair for very cheap contains the first three volumes absolutely classic roots rock steady um, some amazing names on here Derek Morgan Byron Lee Kingstonians pioneers um, upsetters on here quite a bit Maytals um, Jimmy Cliff um, kind of kind of a I think an essential essential set of records these three um, yeah, wonderful. Always lots to listen, lots to discover when I pull it out. And then this morning, um, I was grooving out to these wonderful two fella records here. This is um, Perambulator with Egypt 80 and Beasts of No Nation with uh, Egypt 80. I, I really gravitate towards the ones with Egypt 80 on them. They have just some really nice, how to describe it, guitar playing on it and some groovy, low-key guitar playing on it. but. I really love both these fella tracks, both these fella albums, especially this one here. I do think um, Beast of No Nation and Just Like That are two absolutely killer top shelf fella tracks. Um, this is a pressing on, I think, Celluloid or something like that from the 70s, 80s, early 80s. Um, actually, that's Margaret Thatcher, isn't it? So it wouldn't be the 70s. <laughs> 
Um, is it on sale? Let me have a look. It's on Eurobond Records from 1989. There we go. I don't know why I said it was in the 70s. I mean, clearly it's fell over the Egypt 80. Uh, and then Perambulator which is a Nigerian pressing that I also scored off a local page many years ago for a very, a very cheap, very cheap price, um, 1983. Fantastic. So there we go. The music ended right on time. That's the end of the video. I hope you're all doing well. Um, there's lots of videos I need to catch up on. I saw Fred just put up a um, video of his trip back from Europe, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. Um, I hope you're all, I hope you're all overdosed on a uh, vinyl tag. <laughs> well, isn't there five of them now or six of them? I've seen the jazz vinyl tag. I'm not even going to go down this road. Um, that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.